What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to talk about Jeepers Creepers in this video here today. So this is mostly going to be talking about the season one finale that I have mapped out in my brain according to the outline of the Jeepers Creepers TV series from the series creator that is most likely never going to actually come to fruition. But what I wanted to address was how the outline incorporated the character of Minxie. I touched on her briefly in another video I've done in the past about this TV series outline, but I want to talk about it here again and kind of predict on how she might have become relevant to what was happening at the Taggart Barn with trisha and everyone else that was gathering there to kill the creeper before it woke up uh, or burn its husk like we know it they all wanted to do well not all of them um most mostly a certain character but here's where the jeepers creepers tv series would have taken us in regards to minxie so as a reminder this is an outline from the series creator and i've addressed it in multiple videos in the past going over how cathedral was converted into what essentially would have been a season one of a series that most likely is never again going to happen we know jonathan breck has talked about this tv series in the past talked about how cathedral was turned into this and i was just lucky enough to stumble across somebody who shared a lot of important information with me i also showed you guys those exclusive images of lucas adams who was cast as Derry jenner during that one day that they actually shot the cathedral movie that never never came to be so this bit but is about Minxie a little, a little briefly. The description of Minxie in the outline of the TV show goes as follows. Like most of the survivors of the Creepers attack on a high school bus 23 years ago, Minxie has done her best to forget the nightmare in her past. A single mom estranged from her kids and a struggling singer in a local band. It has been 23 years since Minxie has had one of her traumatic and prophetic dreams like she had on the bus. But when the dreams start up again and become as bloody as they are prophetic, Minxie becomes a reluctant part of the small group of survivors that come together to track and destroy the beast once and for all. Now, if you read the Cathedral script many years ago, like I know some of you have, you'll recall that Minxie is nowhere to be seen in that script. So this is a welcome change that was done to it for the TV show. Adding a character from the bus is something that I know several people would want in a proper Jeepers Creepers sequel. So what could Minxie possibly be dreaming about that causes her to join forces with Trisha, Taggart, Giselle, and the mercenaries Trisha has hired all at the Taggart Barn? My guess is that Minxie was dreaming about what would happen if they actually burned that husk. So she wanted to try and convince them to not do that. Remember, there is a woman who lives in town, Poho County, named Blair Kittredge, and she has been collecting the husk of the creeper after it cycles. She has like 40 of them or so in her cellar at the farmhouse where she's isolated herself with her sons and everybody thinks she's weird. She's, she's, she's a little hated in the town or mostly hated in the town, but She's actually a town protector in a lot of ways. She has over 40 creeper husks, which if that's that many husks down there, most definitely that's something that her family has been doing and it's just been passed down and kept a secret, I would assume. Now, Blair's farmhouse with all the husk is ultimately burned in the season one finale, I would imagine. Helicum, a priest who ultimately turns on Trisha and Taggart because he believes that the creeper is a biblical is biblical and it's a creature of Armageddon. So he makes his way to Blair's farmhouse with Trisha's mercenaries after he learns about Blair's husk collection. And I think he may have learned about this after Minxie shows up and has a conversation with him about why she's here and Helicum overhears this and this is where that is a mistake because now Helicum is gonna go out to Blair's farmhouse and burn all of the husk and just get rid of everything that Blair has on the creeper. So the problem with this is that the creeper anticipated that humanity would start to think it was a creature of Armageddon and think that burning a husk would fix it. Thus, someone would do exactly what it wants them to do, burn its husk so that it may be reborn with ultimate power. So we know that while that is going on, while that is going on, we have a character named Rowan, an archaeologist who many of you might also remember from the cathedral script. He is the final person standing inside of the cathedral cavern that is discovered between him and his now deceased colleague Craig or Greg. He goes toe to toe in the cathedral with the creeper and ultimately manages to blow the creeper to bits with a C4 explosive. So while they're out there burning down Blair's farmhouse, Rowan still has his showdown in that cathedral cavern like he did in the cathedral script. And I'm assuming he still gets to blow the creeper to bits with a C4 like he did in the cathedral script. The problem now, though, of course, is that 
different to the cathedral script there's something else going on that's about to make the creeper a whole lot powerful. Rowan and everyone else in Poho County are completely unaware that what Helicum and his mercenary or that what Helicum and the mercenaries that Trisha hired have just done at Blair's farmhouse is going to cause the creeper to be turned into an even more powerful entity when it is finally reborn and brought back. How it's going to be reborn, that's the thing that was that was peculiar to me. Because the outline basically confirms that it still plays out the same way Cathedral played out in the Ultimate Inn. The Creeper is blown to bits, but because of what they just did with the husk at Blair's farmhouse, since those husks have been burned, that's going to create some problems. Especially now that, that Rowan was doing what he was supposed to do to survive, not knowing what this thing is. You can't blame Rowan. The people who are really at fault here are Helicum. Helicum actually was working his way to becoming a villain in the second season. So how was the creeper going to actually come back from that? You already blew it up and the Husker burned. How is it supposed to be reborn? I imagine there might have been something done that would have further convinced uh, Helicum that this is a biblical creature. Helicum, you have to remember, is somebody I didn't I didn't bring this up. He's somebody who lost a family member to the creeper many years ago. So he spent his life trying to get back at this thing. But his he's misguided. He's misguided in his beliefs and he's doing exactly what the creeper wants him to do. The creeper knew that humanity would probably at some point take the easiest outcome you could relying on religion and thinking that burning everything is going to be the solution and it's actually not it made things a whole lot worse so i like that clever twist they're doing on religion in this outline however again this is most likely is not going to happen i do not even know how the creeper would have come back from this because you already blew him to bits i imagine what could have gone down is after he blew up Rowan could have sat there and season two could start with Rowan still sitting there in the creeper cavern with a sigh of relief. Everything is still happening at the Kittredge farmhouse. The fallout from that Blair's going crazy at Helicum. Helicum thinks he did the right thing because he stopped the creeper from reawakening. But then while that's going on in that same cathedral cavern, something could something could happen with the ground something coming out of the ground and of course that's something coming out of the ground would be the creeper but you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notifications so you never miss a video in the description i will have links to my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video